instead of talking about the gospel, every once in a while, it's nice to talk about the epistle. And in the epistle here, you read Paul speaking to the uh, Galatians. So he's traveling after Christ dies. He's traveling throughout what is now modern day Turkey. And he's spreading the gospel. And one of the big questions that came up at that time, which is the question that is confusing to many people today, is what is the place of the Torah? All of the people, well, not all, but the vast majority of people that Paul and Peter and, and Andrew were converting at the time in the beginning were Jews. So the question came up, what do we do now with Jewish law? What do we do with the Torah? All right. And so this question comes today. So do we follow the Old Testament? Do we follow the Torah? Do we throw it away? We've got Jesus saying on one hand, if anybody even denies one iota of the, of the Old Testament, then let him be cursed. And then they say, well, wait a minute now, you are no longer under the law. And then we have a totally, at least from an Orthodox perspective, we have a very confused, what we feel to be expression of faith, which is the Messianic Jew, which has both. They have Christ and they have the Old Testament. So the question that many people ask, as they asked in those days, is what do I do with the Old Testament? What do I do with the Torah? Actually, Torah is the better word. And here he gives us the answer. Because he says here, before faith came, faith now is belief in something that you cannot comprehend or understand. So this is why we don't go around trying to prove that God exists, because that comes through faith. So now faith comes through Christ. He goes on and he says, and the word that you see here is in your, in your bulletin is, we were confined under the law. But if you read now in the Greek underneath there, it says, Adelphi, protu el sintipistin, before now faith came, iponobon, under the law, efrurometha. Now that's a mouthful. There's a lot of word under there. So what does that mean then? Well, the gospel writers, especially Paul, liked to use military terminology. So if we look up the direct meaning of that in terms of what it meant for that day, it is to guard and protect as a military guard was. So this is where they get the idea of confinement, because to now have under the control of, to be imprisoned. So they directly translate this. Well, that doesn't sound right, because Jesus says, I no, call, I no longer call you servant, I call you friend. So this can't be the definition. This is not what Paul is saying here. So what Paul has to be saying is then the other meaning of the Greek word, which is to protect and guard against. And this is sometimes what happens, is that we will hear people translate a word with only a singular meaning. And they will say, well, in Greek, this is what this means. And it only has that meaning. Well, in English, we have a lot of words that don't have just a single meaning. They have multiple meanings. And this is exactly what we have here, is if we read it as, we are, as you were confined under the law, then it makes it sound like the Torah is a prison. But if we interpret it correctly as the other meaning of the word, ephrometha, then we can interpret it that we have been guarded against. Guarded against what? Sin. We are guarded against now sin. And the Torah is that protection during that time. So we were kept under this guard, not a confinement, but a guard, so that until faith comes in Jesus Christ, now we can be protected. So the law was now our guardian. They use the word custodian here, but the word is our guardian. It protects us from, at that time. I mean, it protected them, 
But now we have been given faith. We have been given Jesus Christ. And so in that sense, it is no longer our guard because Christ gave us something else as now the new guard. And that new guard is the Pentecost event, which is the grace of the Holy Spirit, the protection, because this is how we talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about it as a protection. We talk about it several ways, but we talk about it as a protection. And that's now what we have revealed in Jesus Christ. I give to you the comforter, the spirit of truth. And this is now our protection. Does it nullify everything that happened before? No, because that was our guard. And now we have a living guard. And that living guard is now the Holy Spirit that's given to us. And so now under Jesus Christ, it says, you now are all sons of God, meaning that you are, I call you friend under God. So... Sometimes when we translate, we have to be very careful because we can get caught up in the idea that words of a language only have a singular meaning. And if we use that singular meaning, we can come up with very bad theology. And in this case, that's what can happen is we hear a word like confinement and in our la English language, confinement is a bad thing. It is something that puts me in prison. It is not what it's meant to be, which is protection. That's what was offered to the Jews. And now through faith with Christ's coming, we are given now a new comforter, a new spirit of truth, a new guardian.